Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons. I'm Emma and in this video I want to show you how I paint my Archlord Discordant or well more specifically his beast. So I start off with a model that's been primed using the white scar spray and I uh, have as you can tell sort of um, well <laughs> I've chopped it into bits well not quite I have uh, I have decided to paint this model in a whole number of sub-assemblies just because there are so many little nooks and crannies so I really couldn't get into where I wanted my brush to go uh, unless it was in uh, in bits and pieces. So yeah, I'm just painting on the video here the, uh, the body of the beastie itself. And I'm using a contrast paint. This one is called Talasar Blue and it has such a, it has a really nice rich blue tone to it that I really, uh, really enjoy. Um, for my other Chaos Space Marine models, I have been using uh, pink as uh, the first base layer. Um, but here I thought, it, thought I wanted to do something different, so I'm using the blue. Then uh, I am... Uh, well, it sounds a little bit... Um, <laughs> it sounds a little bit lazy, but all the bits and pieces that I'm not particularly interested in, more or less all of them, I am just painting using a black contrast paint. And this one is the Black Templar one. Um, just because then I can, when I'm basically done with the model, I'll just highlight it with a little bit of uh, of a silver paint, and then um, I mean, you I don't have to go into too much detail working on that, just because it's the armor plates that I want to focus my time and energy on. Then we get to the trim. <laughs> I think that uh, the bane of uh, of every uh, Chaos Space Marine uh, army player's existence, I suppose, uh, all this trim. And I'm painting it all with the gold. This is a retributed armor. And I am doing it in this particular order where I first use the blue contrast paint and then the uh, and then the uh, metallic paint. Because the metallic paint is a little bit easier to control than the contrast paint. And I don't want to start with my first layers of contrast paint having to be really careful so that I don't get it all over the metal trim. So that's the uh, sort of order of, of painting. Then I've decided I want the... Um, well, I don't know the English word for it. Those nasty teeth-like claw stuff things that are coming from its face. I want those to be a sort of a, um, a toxic green almost. So I am uh, I'm doing a quick wet blend using uh, Warp Lightning, also contrast paint, and the Striking Scorpion uh, contrast paint. Just a quick wet, wet blend so I have the darkest parts closer to the face and then the lighter parts closer to the, well teeth claw thingies that it's got I uh, yeah Sp splinters spins I don't know well uh, anyways I guess you know what I'm talking about then when I have all the first layers of uh, paint down I use the cryptic armor shade to shade the uh, um, to shade the gold trim and again I do this uh, in this exact order because the, the shade is a little bit harder to control than the paints I'm going to use later on for highlighting the armor and so I just want to get it down there so that I don't get it all over the place once I have uh, spent uh, quite a lot of <laughs> quite a lot of time highlighting and doing um, the sort of leaf shapes or whatever I'm, I'm doing later on. So I just want to make sure that the messier parts are done before the more neat parts, yeah, so to say. Then I use the um, contrast paint black templars again and I just paint in the uh, shapes I want to give to the uh, to the armor. I mean, you can definitely just, you don't have, you can skip this step if you are quite confident in your ability to make sure that the, the shapes will sort of uh, work together nicely and will uh, come to a nice point at the end of the uh, armor plate, <clears throat> you don't have to, to do this. You can just uh, go straight to the next le next step. Then for painting in the... Uh, yeah, I don't know exactly what to call these. Um, I'm just going to be called them the, the uh, leaf shapes and then you can decide for yourself if you think that's appropriate or not. So uh, the first color I'm using here is called Pulse Wave Pink and it's a neon color from Huge Miniatures. Um, and Hume, Huge Miniatures actually sent me their neon paints a while back to do a review of, so uh, just full disclosure there. Um, but uh, I'm still using them in almost all of my painting projects just because I really like them. They're not, you know, continuing to sponsor videos or anything. But yeah, still uh, perhaps nice for you to know. So uh, 
I get the pulse wave pink and as you can see I am a little bit careful here. I want to um, make sure that all the leaves come to a point and all the points are it's sort of pointing upwards um, so that I will get the brightest highlights at um, at the top of the leaf shape uh, sort of like where you would, might expect light to come from. Um, uh, this is a, of course a very uh, sort of cartoony look so there is no um, attempt to do any sort of realism or anything but still um, I like that they all sort of point to the, in the same direction. Once I'm done with the uh, pulse wave pink I grab the next pink and uh, this is also from Huge Miniatures and it's called Cyber Pink and it's just uh, it's just a lighter shade of pink and I paint that on top of the other pink paint just uh, trying to be careful not to cover the entire um, a layer of the first pink so that you get a nice progression of colors getting towards the top of the leaf shape. Then lastly I take a bit of white paint. This is uh, the Army Painters Matte White and I just sort of dab it at the very top of the uh, shapes. Um, and this is a step where I try to be a little bit careful because if I get too much white in there uh, it'll just look like you know white paint on top of blue or you won't really be able to see the more vibrant pink colors underneath so trying to be a little bit careful here on the other hand there are so many of these little shapes that even if I mess just one or two up it won't really detract too much from the overall uh, look of, of the of the model I think so uh, then I take another contrast paint this one is black legion and uh, it's the darkest of the uh, of the black contrast paints and I use that as a black line between the shapes so that it they really sort of stand out and you can see each individual shape. Um, I think this is probably the part of the paint job I enjoy the most because this is where I can really see it all coming together and what it will look like when it's when it's uh, actually done. This is just, uh, it, I don't know, there, there is something really satisfying about it and uh, that I just really like. Then I take the other black contrast paint, uh, the Black Templar, and I paint a tiny line in the middle of each uh, leaf shape um, because it just makes, um, I think it makes the uh, white and the pink just pop a little bit more because it gives even more um, contrast between, between the paints. Uh, I don't do the Black Legion one just because I think it gets too dark and too stark. Um, yeah. Then I go back to the thingies in the front of the beast and I just, I mean, I, I'm painting these pretty quickly uh, because they're not going to be the focus of the of the paint job. Uh, that would definitely be the armor scales for me. But I grab a bit of Achillean green, also a contrast paint, and I just uh, sort of uh, really quickly put in a bit of uh, shadow um, just to give a little bit more color variation here. But it's, I mean, it's done really quickly. It's not something I want to spend a huge amount of time on because this is just, yeah, not where where I think uh, my focus on the, on the model is anyway. Then once I'm happy with that, I go in with a bit of mood green just to do a tiny bit of highlighting. And again, this is done really quickly. Um, I'm not I'm not trying to win a golden demon here or anything. As I've said many, many times before, I, I paint to play. And so I spend a lot of time on the um, on painting the parts of the model that I really enjoy painting and that I think are fun. And other parts of the model I am uh, a little bit less careful with just because, I mean, yeah, it's my toy and I don't I don't expect it to win any uh, any painting competitions or anything. Then I grab a, another paint from Huge Miniatures. This is called Quantum Green and do another layer of highlights. Um, again, really quickly. I think I just scooped the paint right out of the bottle and didn't even bother to thin it down or anything. <laughs> um, yeah. And then lastly, I take a bit of a Starfire Yellow, also a, um, a neon paint from Huge Miniatures and just do the last layer of, uh, of highlights here. And um, the reason why I really actually bothered to do this is because it'll uh, it'll look cool under a UV light. <laughs> and then I got the idea that those uh, that his things there uh, should look sort of um, nasty and slimy. You know, it's coming out of his mouth, right? So I put a little bit of much 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 
uh, over it uh, just to make it look a little bit shiny. It's just a little bit of silliness, I guess. And then lastly, I go over all the middle bits, highlighting it with gold and silver and stuff. Um, yeah, again, done pretty quickly. This is not the part of the painting process I enjoy the most. So, um, and uh, here you have the uh, finished model. And I, uh, I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. It was, uh, it was a huge painting project, much, and it took much longer than I thought it would, just because there, it had so many little bits and pieces that all needed to be painted. Um, but I think it looks fun, and uh, I enjoy the look of uh, of the beastie being um, being a little bit different than the rider. The rider I painted like I painted the um, the. Uh, uh, Moller fiend or forge fiend, fiend whatever uh, I've showed off also and uh, so I thought I would make the rider stand out a little bit by painting him just pink while the beastie is blue and pink so uh, yeah I, I thought it was uh, that was kind of fun and of course I also have a photo of it uh, under a UV light and it was just uh, I mean I do these photos all the time <laughs> just it's just fun to me so uh, yeah, uh, here you obviously can't see that the beast looks any different from the rider, but I mean, how often do you actually get to play under UV light, right? I, I certainly never have had that opportunity. Yeah, but anyway, um, this, was, uh, this was the tutorial, so let me know what you think. Do you have any suggestions for other stuff you'd like me to see uh, paint? Uh, I'll, of course, be more than open to hearing about it in, uh, in the comments. Also, if uh, you want to stay up to date on my painting projects, you can also follow me as Dyson Demons over on Twitter and Instagram. And if you'd like to show off your own uh, painting and building projects, you can join me on Dyson Demons showroom on Facebook, where we have a really nice little community as well. So yeah, that was, uh, that was what I wanted to show you today. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, uh, if you did, I would of course appreciate a like and perhaps even a subscribe as well. So thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.